Today we're gonna to look at a pretty nice integral. So we've got the integral from zero to one of two x plus one over x squared plus x plus one times this crazy big sum. So we've got x cubed plus x to the ninth plus x to the 27th. The next term would be x to the 81st and so on and so forth. So the important thing to realize is that this is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of x to the three to the power n. So it's not a geometric series. So if it were a geometric series, we could easily sum it up. But in this case, it's not a geometric series because we've got this exponential within the exponential. Okay. So that being said, we need a little bit of a interesting strategy to solve this. So what we're gonna do is consider the family of pieces of this integral built by these powers of x inside of this sum. So let's just say that here. So let's set i n, so i sub n equal to the integral from zero to one of this two x plus one over x squared plus x plus one times three times x to the three n dx. Great. So notice the n equals one case is this x cubed. The n equals three case is this x to the nine. The n equals nine case is this x to the 27 and then so on and so forth. Okay. So now that being said, let's work on this object right here. Okay. So let's rewrite it like this. We'll have the integral from zero to one. We have our two x plus one over x squared plus x plus one. Now we're gonna take this x to the three n and we're going to add zero to it. And we'll add zero to it like this. We'll have one minus the quantity one minus x to the three n. Great. So something like that. And you might say, well, why is this helpful? Well, we'll kind of see why it's helpful. It'll allow us to rewrite this into what is essentially a simple integral and then something involving a geometric series. Okay, so now let's split this into parts. And we're gonna split it into one part from this multiplication by the number one and another part by this multiplication by this guy right here. So that's gonna give us the integral from zero to one of two x plus one over x squared plus x plus one dx. And then it'll be minus the integral from zero to one of two x plus one times one minus x to the three n all over x squared plus x plus one dx. Great, and now we'll work on these separately. So probably the first thing to notice is that in this first integral, we can make a nice substitution. So if we set u equal to this denominator, x squared plus x plus one, then du is the numerator. Great, so that, may, that means that's going to integrate out to the natural log of u evaluated from, well, the corresponding u values of zero and one, but we're not gonna worry about that so much. We'll, in this case, just put it back in terms of x. So we have i sub n is natural log of x squared plus x plus one evaluated from x equals zero to x equals one. So that's this first bit. And for this second integral, we're gonna take this and multiply it by one. And we'll multiply it by one in the form of one minus x over one minus x. And that's because that causes some nice simplification in the denominator, because we can recognize that denominator now as a factored difference of cubes. Okay, so let's see what we have at this stage. So this will be minus the integral from zero to one, and then I'll have two x 
plus one times one minus x. So that's from this bit right here multiplying together. And then times one minus x to the three n over one minus x cubed dx. And that comes from putting these two terms in the denominator together. Okay, nice. But now let's go ahead and simplify this. So if we evaluate this function at one, we get the natural log of the number three. If we evaluate it at zero, we get the natural log of one, which is zero. And then I'll take this minus sign right here, exchange it for a plus sign by changing the order of subtraction for that one minus x term. Okay, so that's gonna give me plus the integral from zero to one of, now I can multiply this out, I have two x squared, then I'll have minus two x plus x, so that's gonna be minus x minus one, and then we can view this stuff that's in this purple box as a summed finite geometric series. So I'll let you guys review the exact rules for a summed finite geometric series, but we end up with something like this. This will be the sum as k goes from zero to n minus one of x to the three k. So our common ratio there is x cubed. Our starting term is the number one and our finishing term is x to the three n. Okay, so now we're in pretty good shape. From here, I'll distribute this x to the three k through and exchange the order of summation and integration, which is not at all sketchy here because we have a finite sum. So that'll leave me with the natural log of three, and then I'll have plus the sum as k goes from zero up to n minus one of the integral from zero to one of two times x to the three k plus two minus x to the three k plus one and then minus x to the three k. So we're left with something like that, which isn't too bad. Okay, so now let's start simplifying. We have the natural log of three plus the sum as k goes from zero up to n minus one of, so this term right here will give us two over three k plus three. Now I think that's about it. And then of course, x to the three k plus three, but then evaluated at zero and one. So that just gives us this like first term like this. And then we'll have minus one over three k plus two, and then minus one over three k plus one. So we end up like this. Great, and then just to be careful, that's all within the sum. Okay, nice. But now if we look at this, this takes care of all types of natural numbers. All natural numbers are of the form 3k plus one, 3k plus two, or 3k plus three. But they're attached to different coefficients. So this is attached to a two, a minus one, and a minus one for that second one. So what I'd really like is for them to be all attached to a minus one. So let's change this two to a minus one, and I can do that by adding three on the outside. So that's just like adding zero. So let's do that. So we'll add three times the sum as k goes from zero up to n minus one of one over three k plus three. And if we carefully look at what we started with and what we ended up with here, we see that everything is good to go. So next up, I'm going to factor a minus sign out of this. So that's gonna change all of these to pluses. And now let's make a quick observation that the k equals zero term gives us, let's see, one plus one half plus one third. And then the k equals n minus one term, in fact, gives us, let's see, one over three n minus two plus one over three n minus one plus one over three n. So when all is said and done, we have a sum of all reciprocals between one and one over three n. 
So let's rewrite this bit. So we have the natural log of three minus one plus one half plus ending at one over three times n. So that's from this first bit. So now let's see what this happens to this second bit. This is actually a bit simpler. We can take this three, multiply it through, and that'll give us one over k plus one summed between one and n minus one. So that'll be plus one plus half ending at one over n. Okay, so there, we've got this nice closed form for our i sub n. So let's collect that over here and then we'll move on. So we just split a part off of our goal integral and we calculated that. And I'm going to write it in a more compact notation by introducing something known as the harmonic number, h sub m. So that's gonna be the sum of one plus one half plus one third ending at one over m. So I've done some previous videos on harmonic numbers if you'd like to check those out. And in this new language, what we showed is that i sub n, which was the integral from zero to one of 2x plus one over x squared plus x plus one times x to the three n dx, was in fact equal to the natural log of three plus h sub n minus h sub three n. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a new object which is gonna help us bring this home. So let's call this new object j sub n. So, and j sub n will be defined as this harmonic number h sub n minus the natural log of n. So recall that the harmonic number is defined like this above. But now I wanna make the following really important observation which helps finish this thing. And that is if we take j sub n minus j sub three n, we get something interesting. So let's notice that this will be h sub n minus the natural log of n, and then minus h sub three n minus the natural log of three n. But now let's rewrite this a little bit. We get h sub n minus h sub three n, and then we'll have minus the natural log of n, and then plus the natural log of three n. But let's recall that by the product rule with logarithms, the product will tur turn to a sum, so that'll be the natural log of three minus the natural log of n. But now we get these natural log of n's terms canceling, and we are left with exactly i sub n. Great. So we're able to write these i sub n as differences in the j sub n. So that's really good news. And now that we've done that, let's finish this thing off. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the sum as little n goes from zero up to infinity of i sub three to the n. Just based off how we defined i sub n, that's pretty clearly the case. But now we define infinite sums in terms of their partial sums. So this is gonna be equal to the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum as little n goes from zero to capital N of i sub three to the n. But I'll rewrite that i sub three to the n using this rule here that I've just derived. So that will be j three to the n, and then minus j of three times this, but that's gonna be three to the n plus one. And I guess I should say that we did the partial sum in this step. Perhaps it would have been a little more careful to do it in the previous step from here to here, but I'll let you write it down like that if you really wanna be careful. Okay, so now let's finish this thing off. So this is gonna be the limit as capital N goes to infinity. I can split this sum into two now. That'll leave me with the sum as N goes from zero up to capital N of J sub three to the N, and then minus the sum as little N goes from zero to capital N of J sub three N plus one. 
Now what I'd like to do is re-index these things so they have the same type of terms. So what I'll do is I'll take this second sum and I'll replace every n with n minus one. And now let's notice when n minus one equals zero, that means that n equals one. That will give us our new starting point. And then when n minus one is capital N, that means that little n is capital N plus one. That gives us our new ending point. So let's just smush these in there right now. So we have, this will turn into just three to the n, and then here we'll start at, at one and end at n plus one. Okay. But now from here, we notice that these sums are almost exactly the same. This one starts at zero and ends at n. This one starts at one and ends at n plus one. So what we'll do is take out terms from each so they start and end at the same point. So here we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. Taking out the zero term, we'll get j1. And then we'll have plus the sum as n goes from one up to capital N of j sub three to the n, and then minus the sum as n goes from one up to capital N of j three to the n, we're taking out that n plus one term, and so that'll be minus j sub three to the capital N plus one. So that's where we are so far, but some stuff very noticeably cancels. So this term right here will cancel with this term right here. And then we could recognize that j sub one is simply equal to the number one based off the definition of j. h sub one is one, and the natural log of one is zero. And then from that, we are subtracting this j three n plus one. So let's see, j three to the n plus one will in fact be h, three to the n plus one minus the natural log of three to the n plus one. But now we can maybe bring this one outside of the limit, leaving us with one plus, and then by recognizing this as a subsequence of the sequence of just maybe h sub m minus the natural log of m, we can rewrite that limit as the limit as m goes to infinity of h sub m minus the natural log of m. And I just realized this should have been attached to a minus sign. Okay, good. But this limit has a famous value, and it's in fact one of Euler's constants known as gamma. So this gives us the final value of one minus gamma, this constant of Euler. Okay, so along the way, I mentioned that I did a couple of previous videos about harmonic numbers. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.